VFX Bro here, and today we're going to be going over the magical iPad 3 video from Final Cut King's channel. And we're going to be going over one of the first shots, which was the penguin coming up from behind the corner and peeking his head out, winking and smiling. So we're going to get started with that here in After Effects. So we're just going to bring in that one shot, single shot, still frame, you know, CGI, 3D modeling was done. It was really simple, all done in After Effects. Now really quick, I just want to say that for those of you interested in the cartoon effects in the Magical iPod 3 unboxing video, those will be available in April 2012, and you can check a quick preview out on vfxbro.com, and we can see here there's a nice blog article posting with the links, and again, that will be available coming here in April. Really awesome package. I'm super excited about it. I've been working on it for about four months now. And you can actually even submit your email down here to get a price discount once it comes out. So go ahead and check that out on vfxbro.com. If you go on the home page, there will be a blog article with a link to that discount. So go ahead and check that out. So we're going to go ahead and start off with our shot, making it a new composition. And if we scroll through this here, we can see we have the penguin coming out from the corner and just uh, still there. And so... What we can do here is take this shot and we're going to be using some puppet tooling and some painting and cloning to achieve this effect. First we're going to open up Mocha, Mocha Pro. You can use Mocha for After Effects which is free with After Effects CS4 and above. If you don't know where to get that, go and just Google it, Mocha for After Effects and you should be able to find a free download. So go ahead and check that out. Really awesome tool. We're going to go ahead and start here and first open a new project. We're going to create a new project here on the left and we're going to import a new clip. So we're going to import that same clip, that penguin shot, which has already been cut to the total length that the it's been cut to the total length that we're going to see in the shot. So we have it here imported, hit OK. Override our previous file. And now we have that shot imported here into Mocha. Now we're going to zoom in here on the face. We can see what we've got going on here. We're going to consider this to be a nice planar surface, his face here, and we're going to make a spline right around the points of high contrast, most closest to our um, face that we're going to be changing. So we have here, we've created this nice spline, and we're going to create another one here around our reflection here on the nose because we know that reflections don't stay still in real life. As the camera moves, the reflections move. And so that's not an actual point on his face. So we want to remove that and exclude that. So we're going to go here into our layer controls. We're going to select our second layer, which is the one we just created. We're going to turn off the tracking right there because we don't want that, that to actually track. We're going to set that to a subtract blend mode so that it subtracts. We're not going to actually be tracking that reflection. We're going to link it to our first layer. So we're really only tracking with our first layer. And we're using our second layer to exclude the reflection. And now if we just track forward here, we can see that it is tracking wonderfully. And again, what we're doing here is a planar motion track, which is not done in After Effects. It's done in Mocha, and it's so much easier and so much more useful. We can accommodate for any sort of distortion, any shear coming um, from perhaps rolling shutter, and just a super useful tool, great for projects like this, especially when we have relatively planar surfaces. And so we can see it's tracked back. We can stop it here because we're not going to be needing any information beyond this point. We're going to go and hit export tracking data, copy to clipboard. And now if we go here into After Effects, we can go layer, new, null object, and simply go to the first frame and hit command V and or control V if you're using Windows. And it's going to just paste it right on there. So we've pasted that tracking data. We can see it's sticking wonderfully to our penguin. And now clicking on this layer, we're going to hit command D and duplicate it. We're going to freeze frame our top layer. So we have the same layer twice except for the top one has been frozen to this frame. Now we're going to hit G and create a mask here. And this mask we're going to just draw right around the mouth. And it can be pretty accurate here. We're only going to be drawing one mask for this effect. And just kind of straighten this out here a bit. Now with this, sol this layer soloed, we can see we've drawn out this mask and we have this mouth that is soloed out. 
and we can see it's just stuck there because we've frozen the frame. Now what we can do is we can parent it to our null object here. And now if we scrub through this, we can see that this still image of the mouth is moving around as though it were tracked onto the original shot. So we have that super handy, super useful, all around great situation here. And now what we can do is actually unsolo this layer and we're going to create our puppet. So we can click on the puppet tool up here and we're going to create pivot points on the sides of the mouth and the center of the mouth. And we've automatically created keyframes at this position. We're going to go ahead and move forward about three keyframes by hitting the command forward button, command right arrow. And now we're going to just move this mouth and animate it with the puppet tool. So puppet tool is a super awesome tool, super handy in situations like this. And we're just now animating the mouth by moving it up. We're going to move the bottom of the mouth down a little bit here. And now if we move backwards, we can see that we've animated the smile. And there we have it. Now we're going to do is hit Command Shift C and pre-compose this. Move all attributes into the new composition. And we're just going to call this the mouth. So we have a composition here with just the mouth. And we're going to re-parent this to our null object because we've moved all our, com our comps attributes and now what we're going to do is create another mask around this reflection because we want the reflection to move like it does in their original shot so we're going to subtract this mask here we're going to double click on our comp here and we can see that we have this mask we're going to go ahead and add a feather to our mask so we're going to make it four if we zoom in here on the mouth we can see that we feathered it out which is going to help it to blend in with the back plate shot and we can see we've added a nice feather on our mask there which means that it's a gradient where it's going from completely opaque to not opaque at all and now we're going to add a feather to the secondary mask that we added as well so that it blends in. And now if we zoom, now if we RAM preview through this composition, we can see that our animated mouth is sticking on wonderfully and it's and he's smiling. Smile's a little abrupt, but can be changed to your taste simply by going here, hitting you, going into our animation settings. We have keyframes here that we can see, and if we can just drag these out, we can make it appear as though it's taking a using We're going to use the easy ease function as well so that it eases into this second position of animation. And now if we scrub through this, it's going to be a little bit slower and a little bit smoother. Awesome. So there we have the mouth that has been animated. Let's go ahead and move on to the blinking part. Again, very simple. We're just going to click here. Um, before we do that, we want to animate the mouth plate to come in. Um, so we've animated the opacity from 0 to 100% over a course of about three different frames. Just in case that there was any sort of mistracking beforehand, we don't have to worry about that because we only need a couple of frames for him to smile. So now we duplicated our bottom plate again, and we're going to use this to make our blinking eye. So we have that here. We're going to also time freeze this frame. And now we have this plate. We're going to double click on it here, so we're going into our layer settings. And after double clicking on it, we can see here we can zoom in on our eyes. And what we're going to do is use the clone stamp to paint out this. So we're going to go here into our brush size. We're going to make it about f nah, five pixels. And we want it to be round. We don't want it to be very hard. We want it to be as little hard as possible so that we have some sort of feathering as well. So now if we alt click and then we can choose the point that we are cloning. And we're just drawing here on this. Um, we're just removing his eye so that we can make it look like it's a blinking eye. So you can see here, Alt click again to select the region of interest. And then we're clicking on the area that we want to clone over. So it's kind of a tedious process here, especially since we have such a little sample to work with. And the sample meaning the white area of his eye that we're cloning. 
and we want to just keep it as consistent as possible to what it would look like if the pupil was not there. So we can see we have a range of different pixel color values that are being created from the surface of this penguin interacting with the lighting in our scene and we want to emulate that as best as possible. I'm going to come across we're going to come across a little tip here after we're done with this to make it look like it's blending in because we can see here we've got some splotching that will occur in almost any situation that you are cloning but we're going to go ahead and fix that with this quick little tip here so we've got that that looks pretty good and in order to get rid of the swatching we're going to click on our brush tool here and we're going to make a larger brush for this perhaps a little bit smaller than 27 right around 17 where it just barely covers that area and then we're going to take our droplet tool here and we're going to select a color on the side and if we just click once we can see that we're now now splotching that out and kind of averaging all these colors so pretty cool pretty cool there we go it looks wonderful from far back and now what we can do is go back into our composition and we're going to select this layer that we have frozen and we're going to Pre-compose this, Command Shift C, or Control Shift C, and we're gonna call this the Wink Comp. And now we can actually parent this to our null object as well, so that it's being motion tracked on. And now we're gonna create another mask right around this wink here. And there we have it. We have now added in that wink. And now we can turn this wink on and off simply by adjusting our opacity or oh, we're going to turn a feather on here so it m matches in well and we have that selected and now if we alt left bracket we can cut off that comp before that point and then if we alt right bracket we're cutting off the comp after that point and now we've turned that wink layer on and off and now if we scrub through this we can see our little guy winking here at the end and perhaps we want it to last a little bit longer awesome and we want our wink to last a little bit longer than that so we're going to just drag this out here and now our wink will last to almost the end of the composition so there we have it the penguin shot from our magical ipad video has been finished pretty simple it took less than 10 minutes to do if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below Hit me up on Facebook, facebook.com slash vfxbro, or on the website vfxbro.com. Till next time, take care.